Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Campy, and this is a companion video. What is a companion video? Well, I'm glad that you asked. You see, every day on the John Campy Show, Monday through Friday, and on Open Mic on the Weekends, we take live questions from the audience, but we don't always have time to get around to all the questions that got sent in, but I want to make sure those questions all get answered and get answered on a video, so I gather up those questions we didn't have time for, and I address them here on companion video. So, without wasting any time, Let's dive right into it. And the first question we got to get caught up on today comes to us from ZOMG Ruler, who looks like he writes two back to back and writes, less focus doesn't mean Superman can't be on TV in another character's movie like Shazam or other. Okay, so as you guys know, uh, Warner Brothers, basically an executive from Warner Brothers came out and said, we're, we're not worried about shared cinematic universe anymore. We are going to focus on individual standalone superhero films. And that's what we're going to focus on. Which basically, and then Patty Jenkins, director of Wonder Woman, came out and said, yeah, I kind of hope we don't do another Justice League for a while. We want to focus on individual filmmakers. And that's what Warner Brothers is saying. We're going to focus on individual filmmakers, individual movies. So somebody asked me about the Superman thing. And I just basically pointed that out and said, I think it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. They have no plans for Superman. Now, ZOMG Rule is pointing out, well, that doesn't mean Superman can't. Be on, TV in an, uh, be on TV in another character's movie like Shazam. I think you can't be in another movie. In another character's movie like Shazam or other. Well, I mean, it doesn't mean they can't, but they won't. I mean, I think that's pretty much what they're... That's the point Warner Brothers is making, is at least for the foreseeable future. And I certainly don't think it's forever. But at least for the foreseeable future, they have no plans on doing that. And they're not going to use Henry Cavill as Superman as a bit guess quick spot on Shazam. He's Superman. But I don't think you're going to see it with anybody. They just don't seem right now, at least according to their words, it doesn't seem right now like they're at all interested in doing and developing shared cinematic universe. And part of that would include having other main characters in their movies. So I don't think we're going to see Flash show up in Wonder Woman 3. I don't think we're going to see Cyborg show up in Aquaman 2. I mean, I would be all for it. Sure, but that doesn't seem to be what they're leaning towards. Now, if all you want to do is make the argument, well, it doesn't mean they can't. Well, of course it doesn't mean they can't. It's their character. They can do whatever they want, but it doesn't seem like that's what they want to do. And I'm not saying it's what they should do or shouldn't do. I'm just saying, read what they're saying. It doesn't seem like that's what they want to do. So, I mean, anything is possible. And DC characters belong to Warner Brothers. They can do whatever they want. It just seems like if we're going to take them at their word, it seems like that's not what they're going for right now. So I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that ZOMG ruler, despite the fact that, you know, I love Henry Cavill as Superman. Uh, Watcher X writes, <clears throat> confused on power level of Corvus and Proxima, Scarlet Witch and Vision struggle. Black Widow holds her own with no power. If Scarlet Witch struggles, wouldn't Black Widow have zero chance? No, not necessarily. Remember, uh, Scarlet Witch has no, doesn't have any exceptional physical strength or exceptional physical speed or exceptional physical endurance. And when we see Scarlet Witch, like, say, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Proxima, you know, that's what they were doing, going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a way that Black or that Scarlet Witch wouldn't be able to. Scarlet Witch has other tricks up her sleeve, no pun intended, uh, with her abilities, but But that doesn't just automatically mean, oh, against this, that means she'll win. It doesn't necessarily follow that way. So, yeah, no, I have no problems with that at ever. Because and if going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Proxima, Scarlet Witch is going to get smoked. If Scarlet Witch can keep at a distance, if Scarlet Witch can stay away from her and utilize her abilities from a distance on Proxima, yeah, she'll be able to deal with that problem. But once Proxima gets close up and in Scarlet Witch's face, Scarlet Witch is going to have problems. Scarlet Witch is going to have big problems. Uh, Black Widow, that is her strength. Black Widow's strength is close face-to-face, hand-to-hand. So that's why I think it gave the, the appearance and the illusion that, you know, Scarlet Witch can go with, uh, or Black Widow can go with Proxima, but Scarlet Witch couldn't because of the environments and the particular set of circumstances they were in. So, yeah, you, you got to look at it as, as the big picture and the particular circumstances they were in. So I had no problem with that personally. Uh, James Welsh writes, what do you think of the Dean Cain Superman? I don't think much of it, to be honest with you. Uh, Bullet1510 uh, says, Hi, Rob, uh, John and Rob. Heard you mention my two favorite John Woo films, Hard Boil and Bullet to the Head. See my username, uh, Bullet1510. I uh, love Tony Lung Chi Wai's acting. Uh, his one car Y films equal perfection. Well, first of all, my favorite John Woo film 
and I've said this many times, is Face Off. That's my favorite. Will always be my favorite. Now, Tony and uh, has been in a couple of Wong Kar Wai films, a 2046, In the Mood for Love, Grand Math, things like that. Done great, but my favorite movie Tony is in is none of those. And for those who've been watching me all the way back since my days at the movie blog, my all-time favorite cop film, not all-time favorite foreign cop film, all-time favorite cop film, period, is Infernal Affairs. That is my all-time favorite. Now, of course, there's a North American remake of a foreign of uh, Infernal Affairs uh, called The Departed that Martin Scorsese directed and it won Best Picture and Martin Scorsese, but that is a direct reboot and remake of Infernal Affairs, which is, again, my all-time favorite cop film, and Tony's great in it, and yeah, that's my stuff. Anyway, that's my jam. Uh, Randall Guzik writes, Yesterday you talked about the DCU box office. I was wondering about The Dark Knight and Suicide Squad, which never opened in China. How much difference do you think it made? Thanks. Well, I mean, it all depends on how well it would have done it. Like, you can't just say, and I know this isn't what you're suggesting, Randall, but you can't just say, oh, open a movie in China and it will make $500 million. It, well, no, it depends on the movie and depends on how it would be responded to and all that kind of stuff. And for every movie, it's different. For some movies, it makes a massive difference. For some movies, it makes very little difference. So it would all depend on the environment at the time and what goes into it. So honestly, I don't know that Suicide Squad would have done any business in China. I don't know if it would have made $400 million in China. I don't know. I don't know that The Dark Knight would have made any real money in China or if it would have been a $400 million movie in China. I, I just don't know. It's really impossible to say. I just think people need to... There's this impression that if you just open in China, it, you make tons and tons of money but because you're in China. And just look at the statistics. That's not true. We talk about the movies that open in China and make big money, but for every one of those, there's five others that don't. So I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure whether it really would have had any significant impact or not. I really don't. Like Aquaman just may have been, Aquaman did quite well. Um, but maybe it's just a movie that struck people the right way there. Whereas maybe The Dark Knight wouldn't have or Suicide Squad wouldn't have or maybe Suicide Squad and Dark Knight would have done better there. Just no way to tell. It's impossible to really guess. Uh, Randall follows up with another DCEU about box office. Did Gal Gadot's military background and Wonder Woman being banned from 30 countries really affect box office? Not at all. Because like most of the countries, it didn't play. And I don't know what the number is. So I don't know if your 30 number is correct. But most of the countries that it did not play in are not major markets. They're not major markets at all. Like it opened in every significant major market, so I I really don't think that had much of an effect. Uh, gotta love them movies, right? You say hot toys, I say NECA and sideshow. Ah, uh, I mean it's I mean sideshow makes different things, and it all depends on what you're going for. Hot toys though makes incredible stuff, but I don't see why it's got to be an either or. Uh, Kyle Beckworth writes, Captain America, the first K Avenger, the first Avenger in 4k February 26th. Well, that just happens to be my birthday. Um, wow. That is, I mean, other than, uh, other than the first Thor, other than man of steel, Captain America, the first Avenger is one of the most underrated comic book films. I believe it doesn't get nearly the credit it deserves. It's not as underrated as Man of Steel and not as underrated as the first Thor movie, but I think it's a super underrated film. And I have no interest in investing in 4K. I do have a 4K TV right now just because I needed a new TV for my bedroom and they just happen to have a great sale on a 4K TV. But I'm not investing any money in 4K or anything right now. But it is interesting. That's when it comes out. Thanks for sharing that, Kyle. All right. Comic Doctor writes... Will Redford reprise his role in Endgame? Uh, talking about Robert Redford, highly doubt it. He is saying that Old Man with the Gun is his final movie as an actor. So he was, I mean, that was publicized quite extensively. That that movie was his final movie. Like, he'll still direct and produce, apparently. But I think that's it for him as a, uh, as a performer. So according to Robert Redford, Highly unlikely we'll see him reprise his role in Endgame. Never say never about anything, but he says he's done, so I got nothing to go on it but his word on that. Uh, Sasuke Kuchiya writes, John, do you intend to bring back the video game cutscene movie series? I really enjoyed those. So for those of you who don't know what Sasuke is talking about, 
Um, what I would do once in a while is like when a movie like God of War or when a video game like God of War came out, I would watch like the nine and a half hour cutscene movie. And remember, cutscene movies don't do it justice anymore because cutscene movies today aren't just the cutscenes from video games. It's also all the gameplay where any of the story is told. That's why it's like nine, 10, 11 hours or more sometimes. Uh, and what I would used to do sometimes is watch those cutscene movies because some of them are really great to watch. Some of them are dumb. Like, for instance, Red Dead Redemption, the original one, not Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption is actually not that good of a cutscene movie. But Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, amazing cutscene movie. God of War, amazing cutscene movie. Um, and I used to, to do those. I think I'll do them again. I think I'll wait for the next big... Uh, the next big video game release, but I'll probably do that because I had fun. I like watching those, to be honest with you. I really do enjoy watching. I think they're an underrated form of entertainment. They're really cool to watch. And uh, I mean, obviously the best way to, to experience them is by playing the game. If you don't want to play the game for whatever reason, watch the cutscene movies. Sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're not so good, but sometimes they're great. So yeah, I think I'll do them again in the future, Sasuke. Uh, Brett Brooks writes, People seriously need to STFU in the theater. Oh, I, I agree. Now, look, I don't mind in movie theaters when somebody wants to say something to somebody else, but they do make an attempt to be discreet about it. That doesn't bother me. So, like, you know, the guy next to me, something happens in a movie and the girlfriend looks confused or maybe it's the boyfriend that looks confused. And their partner will lean over and like kind of do this. Okay, ba, da, 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 da. And, and that doesn't bother me. Like if somebody's trying to be courteous and they're making an effort to be discreet about it and not to disturb you, it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. It's when they go, oh man, did you see what he just did? I mean, that starts to irritate me. And I'll never forget this one time, man, I went to go see that Jim Carrey movie. I can't remember the name of the, the movie. It was either the number 13 or the number 31 or the number, the number 23 was the name of it awful movie. But what made the movie even worse was we had this gaggle of teenage girls, these four teenage girls sitting behind us who wouldn't shut their fucking mouths the entire time. And I remember we turned around, I took the, the initiative once or twice, turned around and goes, guys, they just, could you please keep it down? And blah, 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 blah. And again later, please keep it down. And finally a buddy I was with turned around, shut the fuck up. Anyway, it was just, it was the most annoying, ugh, drove me crazy. Fortunately, that was many years ago, and I don't see it that egregious very often. For the most part, movie going on is are generally pretty good. There are problems now and again. I got him, I've never had a problem that bad before. But like I said, when people are trying to be discreet, I don't mind <coughs> whispering the odd thing now and again. As long as you try to keep it quiet, then I'm okay. Uh, Marcus Robert Johnson writes, uh, is the Campy Ranch uh, an actual ranch? Explain. It's it's an actual ranch. Uh, it's uh, Let me see if I can find something here. I'll see if I can pull this up. Um, but yeah, when uh, my my dad bought a 200-acre uh, a uh, property, and I'll just show you, I'll bring up this one picture. This is the view from my bedroom uh, at the Campy Ranch up on the second floor. And you can see all that there is for the eye to see. That's, that's a view from the Campy Ranch. Uh, let me see if I can <coughs> find a better picture um, with me on the property on the floor. But yeah, I mean, the ranch, we've got horses and tons of animals and 200 acres. And we have open fields and we have forest and we have, I mean, we just have a whole ton of stuff there. It's it's great and it's beautiful. And I love going there every year and visiting with the family. And I'm having trouble finding it. I took more pictures than that. I took far more pictures than that. I don't know why I'm having a, a trouble finding, um, finding more images. But, oh, well, anyway, yes, yes, it is. It's an actual ranch. And uh, it's great. And I, I love going up there and visiting it. Okay. Gotta love them movies rights. I was recently a game show contestant on Match Game. Cool. Have you ever been on a game show? And if not, which one would you like to be on? I have never been on a game show. Although it's funny you mentioned it. I just had a friend of mine 
was on Let's Make a Deal just, I think it was like two years ago, was on like Just Make a Deal and won like 5,000 bucks. And it was awesome because she was having problems paying her rent at the time and the money came at a perfect time for her. I've never been on a game show. Which one would I like to be on? I'm terrible at Wheel of Fortune. I'm terrible at that game. Uh, maybe Jeopardy. Jeopardy would be a pretty good one. I like Jeopardy. I'll say Jeopardy. Jeopardy is a game show I would like to be on. But that sounds pretty cool, man. That's awesome. But that's great that you had that experience. Uh, Marcus Robert Johnson writes, uh, The entire Unbreakable trilogy was an origin story. I loved it. I believe the girl from Split had powers. Everyone she touched was persuaded by love. <laughs> uh, I mean, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. Um, I, I very much like Unbreakable a lot. I like Split very much. I did not like Glass. I, I wish I did. I liked the other two films. I was looking forward to Glass. But again, I mean, I've said this a million times since I've seen it. It's not a garbage movie. Like, it's nowhere near as bad as some of M. Night's bad movies, like Happening or Lady in the Water or Last Airbender or whatever. Nowhere near as bad as that. I just don't think it's very good. You know, if it's good or bad, I say bad. Not awful, bad, but I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you had a good time with it, man. There are other people who like it too. Uh, James Argenta writes, Daniels was the other Wookiee on Kessel in Solo. Was he? Oh, Daniels is Anthony Daniels. We talked this morning on the John Campia show about Anthony Daniels wrapping up shooting episode nine as C-3PO. I did not know he was the other Wookiee. I had no way. I'm going to have to go and look that up now, but I'll take your word for it, but I'll have to look it up later. That's pretty cool. So even though C-3PO has not appeared in every movie, Anthony Daniels has been in every single Star Wars movie. Okay, if that's true, that's a really cool little factoid. Thanks for sharing that, James. I appreciate that. All right, Sean Zin uh, Zimney writes, Hello from Coldest Hoth, Minnesota. I like Minnesota. Uh, happy to hear good reviews for Shia LaBeouf's new interesting autobiographical film, Honey Boy, Out of Sundance. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the things yet. I know it's a really strange concept for a film. It's the one about himself, and he plays his own father in it. it I don't know. It's a strange concept. But look, I've always said this. As super strange as Shia LaBeouf is, and I would never let him babysit my children if I had children. He's just too weird of a dude. Too unstable, in my opinion. But... Whatever you want to think about him personally, holy crap, that dude can act. That dude can act. He's very, very good at it. And <clears throat> because of that, I'm curious about anything. So I haven't seen the reviews for myself, but if you're saying they're good, I, I mean, good. I mean, look, again, I think he's a tremendously talented dude, even if he's not all there upstairs. And I will totally want to watch whatever it is. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that. All right, uh, Marcus Robert Johnson writes, I once heard Star Wars is like rock and roll and Star Trek is classical music. Uh, it was it was in the J.J. Abrams first Star Trek movie commentary. Agree? Nope. Don't agree at all. I don't agree at all. Because when you go through Star Trek, there's definitely elements of rock and roll in Star Trek. And when you go through the Star Wars films, there's definitely elements it feels a classical. So, nah, I, I don't agree with that assessment. Uh, Marcus follows up with uh, Justice for Han, Justice for Han, Just, just Ice. For Han, eh, Han, I mean, look, we, me and Robert joke about, the reality is this, Han is a bit character, a bit forgettable character who did not have an important role in the franchise, like most of the characters in Fast and Furious that aren't played by Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, or Dwayne The Rock Johnson, or Michelle Rodriguez. There's a litany of characters in these films that are, quite frankly, bit characters, and Han was a bit character, so, eh, who cares? Uh, it's a fictional character, folks. Uh, Zach Houston writes... Check out The Last Kingdom on Netflix. To my everlasting shame, I waited six months to start watching. It's an amazing sword and shield historical epic. I've never watched it, but I'll... You know what, Zach? I've heard other people tell me that it's worth seeing. And <laughs> as I slowly start to get caught up, um, and it's, it is very slowly, but as I slowly start to get caught up on uh, my television shows, because I'm way behind on my television shows... That's one I will probably have to check out at some point. So th thanks for sharing your thoughts. Uh, Carlos Rojas writes, Hey, John and Robert, do you guys think we are getting a second Endgame trailer during the Super Bowl? Thanks and happy Rusev Day. And happy Rusev Day to you as well, Carlos. 
I don't think so. I mean, I again, I'm not saying I know that they're not. They very well could be. I, I have no insider information on this. But I don't think they feel the need to spend that money on the Super because the Super Bowl spots are expensive. And they tend to like to release their promos on football events that are on their network, like ESPN, which is owned by Disney. They tend to like to release stuff on their network. Therefore, if I had to put two bucks on it, I would guess no. We might get an endgame trailer the day of the Super Bowl, but not on the Super Bowl. But I do not think it'll be one of the official Super Bowl commercials. Again, it might. It might. I, I'm, I have no insider information here. I'm just speculating. But I don't think we're going to see any Disney films. That includes Star Wars uh, advertised on the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to want to spend their money there, but maybe they will. We'll find out. Uh, Tim uh, Le- Lahini writes, over or under 50%, the Avengers take down Thanos by exposing his 10-year-old insensitive tweets. Ah, that's good. I didn't know where you were going with that, Tim. That's funny. Uh, we would just like to bring to the Cosmic's awareness that in 1991, uh, Thanos tweeted this, and we think it's inappropriate, uh, and he shouldn't be allowed to be the uh, snapper out of half existence of the universe. Uh, that's I, I didn't know where you are going with that, Tim, but that's funny. Uh, Darth Sidious writes, Hey, John, I was just wondering if you've watched this week's episode of Supergirl and what you think of it. Nah, fuck Supergirl. I hate that show. I'm not going to watch I gave it enough of a chance. I'm not watching it again. Uh, Tom Ellum writes, I understand what you're saying about the new Ted Bundy film, but I think the music choice in the trailer kind of makes him feel like a rock star. I think a different music choice would have been better. Fuck that. Why? Why? It was effective. This is a piece of marketing. I, I, I would just, I never understand. Everybody loves being offended by stuff. Like, it's a movie trailer. And if you want to know what, what perception the director has of Ted Bundy, Watch his documentary series on Netflix, which I finally watched. The Ted Bundy tapes. This guy knows who he is. Oh, you should have. Why are we telling them what they should have had as a music choice for their trailer? It's a trailer. It's a trailer. It's a trailer. They didn't need to have a different music choice. They didn't need to do anything different. They're marketing a movie. A movie called Extremely Evil, Incredibly Wicked, and Vile. That's the name of the movie. So, no, Tom, I disagree with you, my film-loving brethren. I completely disagree with you. Oh, they should have done this. Everybody loves telling everybody else what they should do and what they shouldn't do. It's a trailer. It's a commercial. It's a piece of corporately produced manipulation to get you to buy a movie ticket. And no, they shouldn't have done it any different. It's chilling. It's effective. It's highlighting the persona that this guy put forward and that the public saw and thought of him when underneath he was incredibly evil uh, or, or tremendously, whatever the name of the movie is, incredibly evil, tremendously wicked and vile. The, tr- the title says it all. It did not need different music. It did not need different anything. God, I just feel like people feel like we're supposed, no, no, you should do this. and you should. No, it was perfectly great. It's a perfectly great trailer. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. Um, Killa Strong writes, uh, Angela Bassett gets my vote all day, every day to play Cleopatra. She still looks young. She looks amazing. Angela Bassett is a goddess among mortals. Like, let's just be straight about that. That's why I mentioned her name during the Cleopatra conversation today. She would be, I mean, look, she could play anything. She could play Martin Luther King, and she would somehow pull it off, all right? She's amazing. She's incredible. And yes, she would also get a vote. Of, like, I don't care what character plays it, what actor plays the role, as long as it's a good, talented actress. But if they announced it was Angela Bassett, you'd get a big thumbs up from me. Absolutely. No doubt about it. All right, guys, that will do it for today's installment. We are now all caught up on the Super Chat questions from this morning's John Campia show. Thank you guys for all those who participated in it. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, we will be back again on the John Campia show tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Me and Robert are going to be there. Got a number of really cool things to talk about. 
New Dune casting, Oscar Isaac's in that. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. A whole bunch of really cool things we've already got on the line for tomorrow's show. So make sure you come back and join us then. Guys, remember, jump into the comments section, leave your thoughts on any or all the topics we discussed here today. Just remember, we're all fellow film fan brethren together. So let's have our opinions, but let's be good to each other as we're doing it, because that's what it's all about. Having some good, fun, passionate exchange about ideas that we have different thoughts on movies, but always being respectful of each other, because hey, we're all movie fans together. That'll do it for me, guys. Thanks for being here. My name's John Campia, and until my next video, bye-bye.